And now it gives me great pleasure to pay tribute to our 2011 contributor inductee. As they say, vote peachy. Peachy has been the driving force behind the development of women's tennis. Fern Lee Peachy Kelmeyer. To introduce her today, we welcome Ms. Stacy Allister, the chairman and CEO of the Women's Tennis Association. Please welcome Stacy. We're ready to go, because I only want to do this once. <laughs> All right, well, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, and the assistant captain of the Vote Peachy campaign. We did it, thank you. Uh, to all of the great Hall of Famers that are here on the stage uh, with us, to you, the tennis family, and to the soon-to-be Hall of Famer, Andre Agassi. Uh, what a joy, what a great pleasure for me to stand here today in this historic place and introduce my friend and mentor, Peachy Kelmar. Peachy, <laughs> yeah, let's give her applause. <laughs> Peachy, you've always been in my Hall of Fame and I'm so proud today that you're entering Tennis's Hall of Fame, an honor that is so well deserved. Peachy is the unsung hero of women's tennis. And thanks to today's induction, her story will now be known. So as I begin the story, I have to wind back the clock just a couple of years, just a couple, 1959, not many, <laughs> where 15-year-old Peachy was the youngest woman at the time to compete in the US Open. She was the first woman to play on a men's Division I collegiate team. And you didn't hear me wrong, I did say men's Division I college team. She went on to be a coach, and it was there she forever changed the future of athletics for women. In 1973, she, she sued to overturn the then widely accepted practice of universities refusing to grant scholarships for girls. The suit, known as the Kelmeyer case, was successful. And today, every woman who has a college scholarship should give thanks to Peachy. <clears throat> She has been singularly instrumental in building women's professional tennis into the leading global sport for women. From organizing the first women's event in Madison Square Gardens, to the unprecedented growth in prize money from 300,000 to today almost being 89 million, to the international expansion of the game when she first started her journey where it was a primarily a US-based circuit, to now 53 tournaments in 33 countries featuring 2,000 athletes from 100 nations. <clears throat> and I know Peachy and I sometimes pinch ourselves when we see Women's Tennis Association written in Chinese. To think that the WTA would have an office in Beijing is really a dream come true. And along with that dream, I think Peachy's crowning moment of achievement was when women won equal prize money at Roland Garros and Wimbledon in 2007, a campaign that Peachy was at the center of for more than 30 years. She started that journey and she gave the athletes at the time, this pin, a tennis ball with the equal prize money. And when we got it, she recommissioned it and gave it to everyone who had served and achieved that goal together. Mm -hmm. 
So much about Peachy. A few more uh, uh, interesting facts. She's the WTA's first employee when we opened our doors nearly 40 years ago. She's still coming to the office, keeping me on my toes, sharing her wisdom and experience in the uh, ever so diplomatic, uh, peachy kind of way. And anyone who's worked with Peachy, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm the ninth CEO to work under Peachy. She has always been our boss. And on behalf of myself, Bart McGuire, who's here, and Worcester and Larry Scott, former CEOs, and the CEOs who are here and are with us in spirit, we have been proud to serve with you, Peachy. She has been the glue of women's tennis, holding the WTA together as CEOs and players have come and gone, a constant force for 38 years, propelling women's tennis to unprecedented heights and never letting us forget that our past is our future. And I know today's honor means so much to her because the past is critically important and the symbolism of the International Tennis Hall of Fame is everything she wants the WTA to be. She is selfless. She is humble. It's never been about Peachy. It's, she's given her entire life to this sport, all for the love of the game. In our WTA world, you just say the name Peachy. She brings a smile to everyone's face. I was speaking to Ann Worcester a few nights ago, and she said, if there was a popularity contest in tennis, there wouldn't be a contest because Peachy would win it hands down. Peach, you always make me feel great. You uplift everyone around you. And I can assure you, every tournament, every player, every coworker, every board member who has shared your journey is smiling today. You deserve this great honor, and it's such a privilege for me to introduce you. Thank you for inviting me to be your doubles partner today. Your turn to serve and close out this Hall of Fame match. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. We have a new tagline at the WTA, and it's strong is beautiful. And if Stacy doesn't fit that, I don't know who does. She's short, but she's strong. <laughs> um, Stacy made me sound like the perfect peach, and we know that is not true. But what is true today? is that I'm the happiest peach in Newport. <laughs> to the tennis fans here, to the Hall of Fame Board of Directors, to this elite group of Hall of Famers, to my family, and to my friends. For me, up here today, it just doesn't get any better than this. Thank you. Now look, um, I know I'm not the main attraction today. <laughs> but I just want you to know, Andre, that I'll be the opening act for you anytime, any place, anywhere. I always promised myself that if I had a moment on center court, I would thank the two women who really were responsible for laying the foundation of the tour and the WTA. And those two women are the late Gladys Heldman and Billie Jean King. In 1970, Gladys founded the tour along with the original nine players led by Billie Jean King and Hall of Famer Rosie Casals. These nine players signed a $1 contract and a handshake, and we had a woman's tour. 
In 1973, Billie Jean founded the WTA at Wimbledon, along with 60 other women players. They had no contracts, but they had a lot of handshakes. And the good news for me was I had a job. <laughs> Over these years, my greatest joy has been the privilege of working with the players. But just as satisfying for me has been working with some of the brightest and most talented tournament directors, sponsors, administrators, WTA board members, colleagues, and CEOs in our sport. I'm so pleased that many of them have come here this weekend to join in this celebration. So today, I have many friends to thank. But there is one woman who stood by me in good times and the not so good times. And she became the most powerful woman in tennis. She's my lifesaver, Stephanie Tollison. Believe me, in this sport, you need friends. So it isn't always what you know, but a good bit of the time is who you know. And it was also who I know that made it possible for me to get up here today. My former boss, Larry Scott, now the Pac-10 commissioner, spearheaded my Hall of Fame nomination, along with Jane Brown Grimes, former president of the USTA, and Billy Jean King, my hero and everyone's champion. The next step after you get nominated, you have to get on the ballot and then you have to get the votes. So in steps the strong and beautiful Stacy and does what she does best and starts to strategize. And she also starts to rally support. She, there was not any stone that she didn't leave unturned. And many people thought that maybe she was the one running for the Hall of Fame. So as the votes came in, my dream came true. So I will never forget the special efforts made by Larry and Stacy. And they believed in me sometimes when I didn't believe in myself. So thank you guys. But I don't, I don't really stand up here alone. I feel I represent a generation of women who have done their best in this sport and worked hard. And we have a common bond and a common purpose to give back each and every day so that this sport will be better tomorrow than it is today. In life, we pick our friends, but not our family. So we have to wish for a little luck, and I've been a very lucky person. My parents planted our roots in Charleston, West Virginia, and that will always be my home. My brother, Freddie, inherited the all-round athletic ability, outgoing personality, and a zest for life. My sister, Kay, inherited the good looks, the brains, and the love of animals. As for me, I was not quite so lucky. I inherited my grandmother's name, Fern Lee, and I also inherited a club foot. Now, it was pretty easy to get rid of Fern Lee. That was easy, but it's not easy to get rid of a club foot. But it taught me a very important lesson in life. You don't have to be 100% to give 100%. Many of my family members are here today, and I just want to thank them so much and tell them I'm every bit of, as proud of them as they are of me. So who would have thought that those handshakes that launched the tour and the WTA would result in so many happy memories and friendships and make tennis the number one professional sport in the world for women? So for me, my life is very simple. I love my family, my friends, and I love women's tennis. Thank you. Right there. Stay right there. Hold on one second. Dave, hold up for me, will you?
So on behalf of the Board of Directors, Fernley Peachy Kelmeyer, for, for this day forward, it will be Peachy Kelmeyer Hall of Famer. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.